I'm talking about confession of God's word. It is always possible to tell if a person is believing right by what he says. If his confession is wrong, his believing is wrong. If his believing is wrong, his thinking is wrong. If his thinking is wrong, it is because his mind has not been renewed by the word of God. All three, believing, thinking, and saying, go together. God has given us his word to get our thinking straightened out. We can think, we can think in line with the word. We can, we can think in line with the word, no matter what it feels like. By his stripes, I was healed, thinking in line, believing that. In our studies on the subject of confession, we have dealt with three types of confession, the confession of the sins of the Jews, the confession of the sinner today, and the confession of a believer who is out of fellowship or out of sync with God. In our lesson, we will discuss the confession of our faith in God's word. As I mentioned previously, whenever the word confession is used, we instinctively think of sin and failure. But that is the negative side. It is important in its place, of course, but there is a positive side. And the Bible has more to say about the positive side of confession than the negative. Confession is stating something we believe in our hearts. It is giving evidence to something we know to be true. It is testifying to a truth we have accepted. Our confession should center around five things. What God has done for us in the plan of redemption. What God has done in us through his word and his spirit in the new birth and infilling of the Holy Spirit what we are to the Father in Christ Jesus, what Jesus is doing for us now at the right hand of the Father, where he ever lives to make intercession for us, and what God can accomplish through us or what his word can do through our lips. Confession Network, preaching the word, Mark 16, 15 through 20. I think this might be my favorite, my favorite section of the Bible. And he said to them, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name, they shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues, or tongues is just an antiquated word for languages. They, will, they shall speak in new languages. They shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. And that, of course, you got to use your noggin. You're not going to drink deadly things and take up serpents deliberately. This is about if, for, for example, maybe our water becomes contaminated. Well, we believers do not have to worry about it. Maybe we walk right into a nest of poisonous snakes. We do not have to worry about it. We walk in the supernatural realm, another dimension. That's what Jesus paid for. So, they shall take up serpents. If they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. And I have testimonies about how that has worked in my life. Ah, oh, such wonderful surprises. Just being obedient to touch people, touch people, and say, be healed in Jesus' name. And then here, weeks later or a year later, that they were healed. It's not, it's not 
a whole lot of tradition and rigmarole. It's just the truth. It, to so then, after the Lord has spoken unto them, after the Lord had spoken unto them, he was received up into heaven and sat on the right hand of God. And they went forth and preached everywhere, and the Lord working with them, with, and confirming the word with signs following. Notice that Jesus said, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. God works through us by his word on our, on our lips. We carry the word to the lost. We do not, we, if we do not, then we waste our time <clears throat> praying for God to do something. It would be useless to pray for someone who is lost if we do not carry the gospel to, of salvation to him. If we could just pray and get people saved, we, would have it, ha, we, we wouldn't have to send missionaries all over the world. We could pray all the heathen into the kingdom. However, the Holy Spirit works only in connection with his word. In obedience to God, Christ's command to go into all the world and preach, the disciples went forth preaching the word, preaching the word everywhere. And the Lord worked with them, confirming the word with signs following. But he didn't do a thing until the disciples preached the word. Signs didn't follow an individual. Signs don't follow an individual. They follow the word. Give the word out and the signs will take care of themselves. You don't follow signs. Signs follow the word.